the break. Last week, the federal government launched the leather policy with a target of $1 billion by 2025. The event was a formal launch and sensitization workshop on the National Leather and Leather Product Policy Implementation Plan. According to the Vice President, Professor Yomi Yoshibajo, a study carried out by the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, which projected that the Nigerian leather industry has the potential of not only increasing its earnings by 70%, but also generating over $1 billion by 2025. Well, we have Mr. Kola Adeshigbe, the Chief Executive Officer of Adeshigbe Company, Nigeria Limited. He's also an independent consultant on leather and leather products to the Department for International Development, joining us to share his thoughts on the leather policy. Good morning, Thank you sir. so much for joining us, Mr. Adeshigbe. Good to have you. Thank you. So uh, you are active in the leather industry. Um, but it doesn't seem to be a very popular industry. It, mm. We don't hear about it every day in the news. Um, Why is that? Are we major players as Nigeria? Are we major players in the industry? Or are we just trying to get something out of it? We have a stake in the industry as a, con as a country, particularly in Africa. We are the major producer of leather and being exported to even foreign countries. But the problem is the government has not been given attention for protection to the industry. That's why we will not be having the, the raised tough support. So this. with this launch now, yeah. uh, do you see, is this the attention you this, think this the industry like deserves the right needs? Now, yeah. Yes, we've we'll been crying for the policy for quite a while, and then we'll be working as early to make sure that the policy comes on, on ground so that we can have a template to work with. Not Thank God the present government administration has done the needful to make sure that this policy is being addressed. Mm. So um, looking at, you know, the industry now, you know, we have there are a lot of byproducts, you know, when it comes to leather. How, how would you say, you know, Nigeria is doing on that front, you know, exporting, you know, finished goods? Um, in Abasa today, if you go to Arera Market to see a volume of shoes being produced, that like leather goods, in shoes, bags, wallet, horses, souvenirs, and they're being exported. Averagely, within a week, you have a million naira intakes from there. That's from Abba? From Abba, only Abba. And if you get to Kano, there's a concession in Kofu and Bai, where you have, because of the culture of the Northerners, some of them, they don't wear cut shoes, as we do down south here. You just sleep on shoes, standards. Reason because if you go to their houses, you have to remove your shoes. So removing the cut shoes gives you a lot of stress. So they just put a slip one in. Okay. So, okay, but how do we relate the ABBA guys that you're talking to yeah. to this policy? Because also in 2018, there was mm -hmm. another policy. Mm -hmm. there, was a, there was a leather policy also launched in 2018, mm -hmm. and this is 2021. Now, how do we relate the reality, which is the ABBA guys you're talking about, yes. and the ceremony, like this policy that is being launched, and uh, you know, $1 billion that is being projected, how do we relate them? Yep, the the ABA policy, the work for ABA, ABA shoemakers, they are really intuitive method of produce production. But we still have some larger industries too okay. that produces en mass. Because their own, the production in ABA is more of makeshift. 10 PS per day, but it's not in volumes because they don't have the capacity to have the equipment. But with, the, with this policy now, the, 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 value, the value chain will now be closed somehow, where we have the skin collectors, the leather manufacturers, the shoe manufacturers, and other aspects. Do we have active regulators who consciously and intentionally connect the ABBA group of guys to the policy group? Do we have it, or we just hope that just it will connect? Sure. You know, what happened is, in 2014, I was at a program on this growth and employment in states which we have, we have to move to Abba and bring all these shoemakers together and form them to clusters. So from there, it's a day fairly project for four years, thinking that we want to increase their capacity, make sure that the finished products they have can compete, compete with, the, uh, with the external world. The SON play a lot of major role on, on stand, standard organization in Nigeria, looking at the middle process of production and looking at the quality of the shoes. So it is this parameter we are using to regulate 
the Aba. So we have a LEPMA, that is Leather um, Production uh, Association in Aba. They have, they have, we, we have to teach, we train them on corporate, corporate entity and how to run the, their programs, taking them through cooperative, uh, cooperative ideas and how to really actualize what can bring them profit. And trading and working with other external organizations too. Nelson Bank played a major role too. Bank of Nelson played a major role. And we have GIZ. GIZ. We work together and make sure that these people are, be, are being regulated. Okay. Well, the, at the meeting, the Minister of Science and Technology said the policy could generate $900 you know, million dollars if well harnessed. You yes. know. How would you uh, say it can actually be harnessed well at this point? My major area is that we think when we make pronouncement, we should do the, we should do the talk. There are still some lapses to generate that amount, but we, it's doable. We can even go beyond that if we have all the all the, all the levels that are supposed to be to be in place. If for such facilities, this is a major problem for us in the industry. When there is no power. The, the factory runs down. So if there is, if all these facilities are there, there's, we, are, we can even generate more than what, what he has mentioned. So the same old problems, basically. Yeah, infrastructure. So it's not just a bar that these things are being produced. No. I mean, when you talk of heights and skin, I think mostly it's from the north. Yes. Okay, so how, what's the coordination from the raw material, you know, to where we see the finished products? How, who, how does it go? The Ilea is not coming now. Millions of cows, cattle will be slaughtered. So they are, they are, the value chain is from the skin collectors. The abateur, that, that, that's where the animal has been slaughtered. Then we have the skin collectors. We will now take it to the tanneries. In the tanneries, we have those who select grading, look at the quality, the texture of the, of the, of the skins before they go into process of tanning, tanning. And that process is a chemical process. Hmm. But well, do we have the skills, sorry, do we have the skills abs absolutely, we for have the skills. each? Do we have them trained or we're just doing apprenticeship no. and? No, we have, we have an institution in Zaria that's nihilist, the Institute of Leather Science and Technology. I lectured there for a couple of years. Okay. A couple of years where we're training graduates in leather manufacture, in from even right from the from slaughtering to the end product, we have a program on diploma, HND, and certificate, and then we have other aspect of which is the footwear manufacturing and leather goods. So that's the, that major institute is really doing wonderful things in making sure we have the capacity to to maintain this. All right. The so in 2013, the industry generated 921 million dollars. You know, for the government. So I, I want to know what is it generating right now? Um, for now, I've not gotten the figure. Mm. Well, is it higher or is lower? It higher it's going to be higher. Okay. But the only problem is the COVID-19 has been a drawback. So I'm not be expecting something much more higher than that. Okay. What about the issue of exporting raw materials? Yes. Where are we there? Do we have enough for domestic use? Can we generate uh, foreign direct income from it? Of course we, we can. Of course we can. Okay. Mm. Well, uh, the letter... What about the taste of Nigerians? I mean, I don't think a lot of people are proud wearing clothes, I mean, made shoes, in, made in Nigeria shoes that have boldly written made in Nigeria. <laughs> How's that going? Uh, you see, the issue is that during the Obasidia regime, it's been being, being a lead factor in that area that we should wear made in Nigeria. And exhibitions were here and there, in the textile industry, the fashion industry, in the shoe industry. Because the shoe industry or the footwear industry now is now aligned to the fashion industry. But we know our, our complex here, yeah? we don't see Italian made there. Mm. I'll tell you a secret. Some shoes are made in Aba, and they put in Italian made there. And they, brought, they are brought to, their, to our, all these boutiques here, mm. which we are calling their, their Well, is it because of complex or because of the quality of the product? Quality, mm, yes. But I, would, I, I would address the issue that is this, the complex, much more super, 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 the, the quality. 
Okay, so you just want to wear, you know, international International brands, shoes. Look at my shoe. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't see that. <laughs> Those Nigerian-made uh, shoes. Well, well, you should. I mean, you are in the, in, you are in the industry. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you have a lot of choice. I have to. <laughs> to promote the industry. Exactly. Yeah. But do you see a conscious effort to reduce, you know, exporting, you know, leather at this point? Um, the government brought in export expansion scheme grant, which is to assist the industry. But the conscious effort of the companies, of the government to reduce exportation is handled by the custom industry, the customs department. But we still want to play with the government to give room to this industry to bring in more foreign exchange by export. Because if you look at the whole economy, leather happens to be a cash cow to replace oil in the end of the very, oil. very not so popular cash cow, I must say. Yeah, because we're, we're looking <laughs> at because diversifying the economy, right? Yes. Yeah. So. Well, that's why the economy leather is, is, a, is a short bet for us. It's a short bet for us. Because if we've been having the slogan after oil, the same area is leather and leather industry. So, so that's what we, the, the launch of this uh, leather yeah. policy, that uh, there'll be a lot of attention. But how attractive is the industry to the youths, you know, to get employment and all that? How attractive mm -hmm. is it? If you go to Kano now, you see the youth are really crazy about it. Shoemaking? Yes. Mm. Initially, it was more of that thing, this is where I want to go and learn how to make shoes. When I got to Zaria, 1994, I had to impress on them. There is no average person that will walk out without putting up a shoe. Mm. Our president will not wear his barbaric without putting a shoe. All of us here will have a pair of shoes. So it's an avenue for us to make income. And the, about three years ago, I was on this program of Adam Smith International, that is to train the youths to be fully employed. To, to my, at least, amazingly, now you see all these amateurs on the street now have been brought into this program. We call it Bafita program, a way out. Bafita is a way out. Okay. And this program is, we have to teach them from learning how to even write ABC. And we selected so many areas of competence. Shoemaking, um, the, our phone, mobile phone operating, electric, electrical insulation, welding fabrication, if you see these children, that within three months, they can communicate. It's amazing, and it's, just, it's, it's wonderful. How structured is this? Um, how uh, refined is it? Is it just the crude way of doing it, or is there conscious efforts to make it you know, structured bring and bring in technology, yeah. mechanization, so that there's faster and a more effective production and better quality? You have to start from somewhere. That's, the, that's the, the concept. Teaching that to use your fingers, your hands to cut, and use your hand to stitch before you start bringing technology and using machines. If you're not properly taught how to undo your, use your hand to manipulate your hands, how can you operate the equipment too? But we're well, getting gradually, yeah, we're point. getting to that level now that yeah. even if you, if you get to Zaria now, we have a lot of machines on, on ground for training. Even computer-aided designs machines. It sounds right. like youth in the south should move to the north to get employment <laughs> in the leather industry. The, the, the youth, even in, in, the, in the south, we have a lot of children doing shoes now. Mm. Mm. All right, uh, maybe I'll also learn how to you know, <laughs> make knows? shoes. The myself. second stream of income will exactly. be good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, the chief executive officer of Adeshigina Company, Nigeria, and also the independent consultant on leather and leather products to the Department for International Development, Mr. Koladeshbi. Thank you so much for sharing your Thank thoughts you with so us much. this morning. Thank you for having on me. On happenings in the leather Thank industry. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. You. So we'll just take a short break now. When we come back, we'll have another conversation here on Business Morning and Channels Television. Do stay with us.